Are you looking for Adobe Photoshop hacks? Well, you've come to the right video. Adobe Photoshop, it's a powerful and versatile image editing program. It's full of features that often get overlooked or buried in the documentation. You know, it's funny how so many interesting tools and hacks consist of things the software does well, naturally, but nobody quite remembers how to do them. And it makes you wonder if, well, any of the development meetings at Adobe end up being about trying to make a new feature and then realizing, oh, wait a minute, uh, we did that a decade ago. Well, we've found 15 of these rediscovered Adobe Photoshop functions that can speed up your graphic design projects. These range from enabling legacy controls to using program shortcuts to optimizing your workflow and so much more. But before we get into this, please do us a favor, hit the like button, subscribe as well if this video appeals to you, and go and hit that notification bell for alerts on all future videos. Hey, also, if you want a discount on your Adobe Creative Cloud subscription to take advantage of tips, videos such as these, please check the notes below to learn more using our special link. With that, we're diving in with our number one on the list. Sliders can be a great way to make adjustments, especially when you're fine tuning something such as a brush size or the opacity of a layer. However, fine tuning isn't always necessary either. Depending on your workflow, you may have a consistent opacity that you set a layer to for a process. Now, instead of messing with a finicky slider or manually typing in the opacity percentage on the layer's palette, you can use a simple press of a button. Simply click the layer that you wish to adjust and use the number keys to quickly set a level. Say you want 50% opacity on a layer, hit the five key. 70%, seven key. And it also works with two digits. So if you work specifically at, uh, say, 47% opacity on some layers, quickly typing the four and seven keys will set that layer to 47%. Hmm. You can even select multiple layers and change their opacity simultaneously as well. It doesn't seem like a huge secret, but if you frequently use Adobe Photoshop, little time savers like this can add up. But remember, the keyboard shortcut can also work with tools that use sliders, so uh, brush sizes may take priority instead if you start typing in numbers. So just watch out. Your best bet is to switch to something like a move tool so that you can quickly hit those numbers for layer opacity. From time to time, you may need to merge all of your layers as a composite to ensure the finalized image is heading in the right direction. For example, how are layer styles and colors mixing when a composite is made? Well, instead of manually copying layers and merging them together or using a keyboard command to flatten everything and run the risk of saving over your current PSD, we've got a handy shortcut for you. On a Windows PC, you can hit the Shift, Control, Alt, and E key. Or if you're on a Mac, Shift, Command, Option, E keys. And doing this will generate a new composite layer above your existing layers, specifically above the layer that you've selected. This key combination allows you to see composites without risking unnecessary layer mergers or saving your file with combined layers. Remember to name your merged layer if you need it for more than just a preview. It always pays to keep a tidy layers palette. The tip is meant to speed up your process. Now we're all familiar with the selection tool and trying to extract objects from photos. However, Many of us try to do it manually, rather than taking advantage of the powerful tools that Adobe have created. Adobe Photoshop's object selection tool is very powerful, and it's super effective in most cases, and is absurdly fast. Now, there is no specific keyboard command here. You just need to click the object selection tool from your toolbar, and you'll find it with the other selection tools. From there, you can use the automatic object finder, or if you want to manually control what's selected, you can also do that. Now we've included a link to the Adobe documentation for this exact feature because there is much more to it than we can cover in just this one video. Having maximum control over your canvas can make image editing much smoother. For example, normally you, you cannot slide an image around the canvas unless it's zoomed in, but say you wanna move a zoomed out image so that a corner is in the middle of the canvas. Or say I want to retouch someone's skin, but don't want to zoom in. I just want their face in the middle of my canvas. Or what can I do? Well, that is where a cool feature called Overscroll comes in. This feature is automatically turned on with the most recent installations of Adobe Photoshop. However, if it was disabled by a previous user, or you want to be able to toggle it on and off, I'll walk you through what you need to do. Your first step is to head to the Edit menu on the PC or the Photoshop menu on a Mac. From there, 
head to preferences and select the tools menu. In the tools preferences, you can see a checkbox for overscroll. Turn it on or off based on your needs. Now this is particularly helpful if you have a second monitor and want to reference the full image as you zoom in on a specific area. So say you're editing a photo and just want to adjust a tree line in the distance. You can always zoom in as you make your adjustments, of course. But what if you want to see how those changes look at the image's actual size? The navigation pane, well, we all know it's a bit small for that. So that means that you need to zoom in and out on your image in the canvas to assess how your changes are looking, right? And you can do that. Or you can simply open a copy of your PSD to reference in real time. All you need to do is go to your Arrange menu in Adobe Photoshop. This menu controls how canvas windows are displayed in your UI. Toward the bottom of the list, you should see an option that reads New Window for blank, where the blank is the name of the currently open image. This will duplicate your current window. From there, just drag it to another monitor or stack it as needed to serve as a second preview pane for your project. It makes it much easier to check in with how your finer edits apply to the larger image without much zooming in and out. Adjustment layers are incredibly powerful for quick edits on an image, whether brightening them up or applying overlays. Here's a little trick if you want a non-destructive way to apply adjustments to images. So what we want to do is create a blank adjustment layer. And you can do that easily from the layers palette by clicking Create New Fill or Adjustment Layer and creating a new layer from any of the middle two sets of options. The top and bottom sets apply effects to our images that defeat the purpose here. So I suggest generating new layers based on curves or levels. Once you've done this, you'll see that you have a new layer that is blank and is linked to the layer below using the chain icon. Now you can use that layer to apply blending modes and layer styles without affecting the actual images beneath that layer. One of the best features in Adobe Photoshop that is in plain sight but can often be overlooked is brush smoothing. If you've been using a mouse or a tablet pen and found your lines are a little shaky for whatever reason, brush smoothing can help. To ensure that it is enabled, go to your brushes palette and under your options, select smoothing. If smoothing is checked, you'll be able to see the feature on the options bar when you have your brush tool. Simply look for the smoothing segments and use the slider to adjust the amount of smoothing adjustment that you need. If you click the cogwheel that indicates more options, you also have some smoothing tools such as stroke catch up and pulled string. So if your hand is a bit shaky or you want smoother brush strokes overall, brush smoothing is a huge help and often overlooked. When Adobe Photoshop moved to Creative Cloud, the Refine Edge dialog box was replaced by Select and Mask. While this new functionality is fine, I prefer the original Refine Edge option to be honest. But to access the traditional Refine Edge dialog box, hold the Shift key or the Apple key on your Selection or Active Mask. You need to hold the Shift or Apple key for this to work. Go to the Selection menu in Adobe Photoshop and click on Select and Mask to enable the classic menu. Remember that this traditional menu can only be opened if you have the mask enabled and are holding that shift or Apple key. Why they buried the menu this way is an absolute mystery, but if you're not quite ready to switch over, there is your lifeline. Adobe Photoshop is not known for being a vector powerhouse, and that title goes to the sister program, Adobe Illustrator. While you may not need to use the pen tool a lot in Adobe Photoshop, it does have its uses. So, is there any way to make it a little easier to control? You bet. This is a feature in the options bar of the pen tool. Usually when using the pen tool, you'll draw two points and make adjustments to the lines between the points as those points do serve as anchors. However, if you select the cogwheel icon in the pen options, you can enable the rubber band. Now what this does is that it shows the trajectory of the curves of your pen tool as you lay out your points. It allows you for a finer selection, as you can adjust and see the curvature of your vector lines before committing to it with a click. Also within the cogwheel of the pen settings, you can also enable the pen tool to display color and thickness at your preference, giving you further control of the pen tool as you use it. Consider that to be two hacks in one. Templates are an excellent tool when working with a file that you know you'll be reusing. For example, if you create a template for social media graphics or publications, it will be nice to have a template to work from rather than accidentally edit or even save an existing reference file. 
This trick is unique amongst our hacks because the important step is done outside of Adobe Photoshop. So when you have a template file in mind, save it to a location on your computer that makes sense. From there, you're going to go to the file settings. For example, you right click the file in Windows and go to properties. Under properties, rename the extension of your file that you wish to use as a template from .psd to .psdt. Now, whenever you open that file, instead of opening up the initial file, it creates an untitled copy that you can edit. <laughs> now, this templating system is extremely helpful in eliminating errors down the line, as opening this template file will always require you to save a new file. Also, if you ever want to go back and make a change to the template file, all you need to do is change the extension from PSDT to, yeah, PSD. No matter how carefully I take pictures of papers or features that I need with a straight edge, I'm somehow always off. Sometimes it's the angle, uh, but sometimes it's the image quality. For example, say I only have access to a photograph of a flyer and I need to edit it. Getting the straight edges in the photo, it can be tricky and inevitably, well, something is going to be at an angle. Manually adjusting the edges can be a bit of a slog, but there is a much faster way to do this by editing the camera raw in Adobe Photoshop. You can do this by going to the filter menu and selecting camera raw filter, which will open a new menu. In this new menu, click the transform tool. There you'll also have a few other options on the right hand side of the window. For our purpose, the best one is guided. Now you can use the tool by drawing a line along the straight edges of your document, such as the edges of a flyer, and every time you add one of these transformation lines, the image changes to reflect the edges that you are drawing. With about four good lines, you can pretty much take any image and straighten it out quite easily. The eyedropper tool is familiar to many of us who use Adobe Photoshop, but initially it's limited to only selecting colors within an Adobe Photoshop window. But that is not the case, however. You can use the eyedropper tool to select colors from any source on your computer. Instead of needing to save a screenshot of a website and paste the screenshot into the program to select the color, you can just get the source straight from the website. This is a simple trick, but a great one when referencing colors. All you need to do is select your eyedropper tool in Adobe Photoshop and then minimize the window. That leaves the eyedropper tool active, but now it can draw from any source on your monitor or secondary monitor outside of Adobe Photoshop. Simply click and drag your eyedropper from Adobe Photoshop to a secondary window with the source color that you're after. It really is as easy as that. Try it for yourself. The rotate tool in Adobe Photoshop is surprisingly powerful, but has some functionality that may not be readily apparent. Now this will greatly help any of us who like to work at different angles on our projects and would like to rotate our canvases much more easily. We should all be familiar with the move tool in Photoshop that allows us to move the canvas around when we click and drag while holding the space bar. Image rotation, just as easy. Holding the R key allows you to rotate the canvas as you see fit. This makes small canvas rotations a viable part of your natural drawing process. This hack is particularly useful when creating consistent image sizes and crops for galleries or you know things like Instagram. We'll use the crop tool here to match image sizes easily between other images and a central image that sets the scale of the documents you need. With the crop tool selected on your document that you want your other images to scale to, you'll want to head to the options bar for the crop tool. The first drop down features width and height settings for the crop tool. So you're gonna go and click this and find front image on the list. That will lock your crop tool to the dimensions of whatever the first or the front image is in your open stack of documents. Adobe Photoshop, they're going to note the dimensions and resolution of the front image. Now, when you go to another image in your stack, you'll see that the crop dimensions are already in that image. You can move the crop selection around. You can zoom in, zoom out, whatever you want. When you commit to the crop, you'll see that Adobe Photoshop will apply those crop dimensions to this image based on the dimensions and resolution of the front image. Knockout text is a popular image editing technique that allows the background image to appear through text in an eye-catching way. This is usually done with text and a layer mask. Now, while it does work, it often means that text becomes non-editable. Say you change your mind and want to apply the knockout effect to a different word. Normally, you'd need to create a whole new mask, right? Well, that's not the case with this massive 
time-saving hack. You should have three layers at the minimum to get this effect to work. You'll have a background image, a shape for the text to sit on, and then a text layer with whatever words you want to be knocked down. Double-click the text layer on the layer palette to open the Layer Style dialog box. Under the Blending Options default menu, you need to do two things. First, set your fill opacity to 0%. Then under the Knockout drop-down, select Shallow. When you apply the layer style, you can see the background image appear in your text. Save this as a layer style in your library for easy use later. Well, we hope that these 15 Adobe Photoshop hacks will prove useful to you. It's just amazing how many core functions exist and how we can lose track of them among all the options in the program. Hopefully, though, we've discovered a few new tools or maybe rediscovered some new favorites. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like and subscribe. Also, don't forget to hit that notification bell so that you know when our next video lands. And until then, 